Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here, and today you're an agent in the golden age of monster movies, and the actors that you represent specialize in particular monsters' roles. You'll be competing to get them in the best ones possible. Creature Feature is for 3 to 6 players, it takes 30 to 60 minutes to play, is for ages 14 and up, and published by Trick or Treat Studios. Today, we'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now I've placed timestamps below me right in the description of this video just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Let's get started. In Creature Feature, you'll be an agent in the golden era of monster movies in Hollywood. You'll be competing to get your cast into these movies and scoring points. You'll be trying to have the most power in showdowns against other players to win that movie. But there's bluffing involved because you might have a twist having your co-star be stronger than your star, scaring other players away from possibly having a showdown with you. And possibly scaring them away to drop out from going against you. But scoring the movie gets you the tile and the points, but also the cards of you and all your opponents. It's harder to win by bluffing with a twist, but if you do, you'll score more points. And many of the monster cards have special abilities that can change how things work and how things score. And there's helper cards that you can play at different times throughout the game that really throw a wrinkle at other players' plans. So let's see if you have what it takes to become the best agent over three seasons. To set up, each player is going to select a color, and they're going to take the corresponding player board of that color. They're going to take two pawns and a scoring marker. You'll take the Creature Feature Movie Board, put it in the center of the table, make sure you're using the side for the amount of players that you're playing with. Then you'll find out who was the last person to see a monster movie that was made before 1970, or you can decide randomly, but give that player the last actor marker that looks like this. Next you'll find the scoreboard, put it in the middle of the table, take one pawn from each player, this is going to be their priority pawn. Now the player who had the last actor marker was this player. The player sitting directly to their left, or clockwise, is going to be put on number one. So they're going to place their pawn here. The next one clockwise from them, two, the next one three, and finally the last one in this case. So whoever has the last actor marker is going to be last in the priority track. Now after doing that, you're going to take and give a certain amount of points to the players that are in these respective spots. This only happens right now at the beginning of the game. So as you can see, I've changed the scoring to reflect that. Next, you're going to find the short feature tiles, that are smaller square tiles, and you're going to place them off to the side. It's best to put them in like piles of scoring numbers, one, two, and three, but again, off to the side, you'll be having to get these a little bit later. Next, you're going to locate the seven feature film tiles that are rectangular tiles that look like this. Make sure you don't include this tile. This is mostly for taking pictures and tagging yourself online after you've won the game. Now, from these seven tiles, you'll shuffle them face down, you'll make a stack of five. There'll be two left over. The two that are left over, put them off to the side, maybe over by those short feature tiles that you set to side earlier. Now, if you're playing with six players, you'll only use four feature films rather than five, which means you'll have three set off to the side. Now, the five that you shuffle, you can place face down near the creature feature board. Next, you're gonna find all of the cards. You're gonna shuffle this entire deck up and you'll deal 10 cards out to each player face down. When you get these cards, you can look at them, but do not show them to your opponents. If you're playing with six players, you'd only deal eight cards to each player instead of the normal 10. The object of the game is to have the most points in the end, and you're gonna be scoring points by winning showdowns, collecting feature film tiles, short features, and you're gonna be scoring for the monsters that you put in the movie, sometimes face up, but also sometimes face down. We'll talk about these details going forward. The game is played over three seasons. Each of the seasons goes through these five different phases multiple times, so let's go through each of these phases. The first phase is movie time. You're going to take the top feature film and place it in the corresponding spot on the board. Now take note of the scoring of this tile. It's two points. You're going to find the short feature tile that has half of this amount. So in this case, we're going to go get number one. This is why we put those to the side face up earlier in setup. So for example, we got the one scoring for the short feature. It's half the amount of this. Keep in mind, if you're playing on the five or six player board, that there are two places for shorts and you'll place them like that. Now remember, everyone placed a priority pawn on this track. Do not move these. Keep these here. 
If you remember, everyone has two pawns. The one that is not on here, you'll take and place in the box next to the feature film. Now, if the tile that you pull from here says double feature, you'll replace that double feature tile with the two that you set aside during setup. Now, if you're playing a five or six player game, there'll be three tiles here. You randomly just take two of those three. And so here you see that double feature tile was removed and replaced with two feature films that we had set aside. You'll also place two short features in the box or boxes below, again, having this number. So half of two is one, half of four is two. So I've placed them here. And remember, if you're playing on the five to six player board, you'll add a second set of these below these. But let's say it wasn't a double feature. It was the original example we placed. Next, you're going to go to the team up phase where you're going to select your actors, your cards from your hand, and you're going to place one face down in your co-star spot and one face down in your star spot. Once everyone has finished this, everyone will flip up their co-star. You keep your star face down. You can peek at your own anytime you want to remember what you've placed there. Generally, the total sum of the numbers on your stars, co-star and star, uh, is going to be your total power. Now notice we played a number eight here. The highest number is 11, so it's a pretty high co-star value. Now starting with the player sitting clockwise, or just to the left of the one that has the marker. Now we were the one with the marker here. I've actually placed these in the way that uh, we are situated around the table clockwise. So we have purple would be going first because they're sitting just clockwise or to the left of the player that has the last actor marker. Now they have two choices. They can stay, thinking they have the best cast to win this, or they can drop, dropping to the next level down. Now, they saw the eight and they're like, eh, that's pretty powerful. I don't think I have a chance of this. I'm gonna drop. So they'll drop down here. Anytime someone's, someone drops, they will take this marker from whoever has it and they will put this in front of them. Let's say this next player says, you know what? I, I think I have a shot here, I'm gonna stay. Then this player goes, you know what? I'm gonna drop. They come down here. So now the green player takes this. Now, if you remember, for this first round, the turn order is right here, and the green player dropped and took it, so now it's this player's turn. And let's say they, no, they wanna fight for this. They wanna stay. So then we're gonna come around, now it's purple's turn. Now purple might say, oh, I wanna stay and fight against, currently right now, green against them for this short feature, which will be worth a point and possibly some more depending on the cards, or they can drop. If they decided to drop, they would drop to the next box down, which in a three or four player game is the fold box. Again, they would take this. If you're playing a five or six player game, it would drop to the next lower short and so on and so forth. Now, if you're ever in the fold spot and it comes back to you, you must stay. But let's say that didn't happen. Let's say, you know, this green player dropped. They, they got this. This player stayed. Red stayed. Purple stayed. And green stayed. Anytime the player with the last actor marker stays, then this phase has now ended and we're gonna go to the showdown. So we have black and red going for this feature film. Now here are the two different players that are doing the showdown for that midnight movie feature film. So at this point, they're going to flip over their stars. Now both players had a star that was higher than their co-star. This is sort of a normal play. We'll talk about what happens if that's not the case in just a moment. But in this case, both players did that. And we're just gonna simply add up the numbers. So this is 18. And this is 18, they're actually tied. Then we'd look at the priority track. Red is higher than black, so red would have won that, but everybody else will slide up and red goes to the back. However, let's say it looked like this. 18, 17, and both players had a star that was greater than their co-star, so this player would win because they had the higher power here. Now, let's say it looked like this. This player played a co-star that was lower than a star, but this player, its co-star was greater than this. If you ever have a co-star that's equal to or greater than your star, this is known as playing with a twist. And anytime there's a twist from any of the players, remember there could be more than two fighting for this, then the one with the highest combined without a twist would win. So even though this is 18, they played a twist. This is a 17, they did not play a twist, they win even though they're less than this. However, if all players played with a twist, and again, that's any time the co-star is greater than or equal to the star, in this case, both of them played the twist, then it's the highest power, 18 to 14, so they would win. So you might be thinking, why would I play a twist if you have the option not to do so? Well, that's because two reasons. First of all, if this is your co-star that players get to see, well, they might think that your hand is more powerful than it really is, and they might drop, and you might end up just winning this by default. The second is when you do win with a twist, you'll score more points, which we'll show you in just a moment. 
So in this case, let's go back to the original example. Neither player played a twist. This player has the higher power. They won. They will take their cards and all of the opponent's cards. So it's these two. But again, there may have been a third opponent that didn't do a twist. They'd get their cards as well. Now, they'll place those cards face down. They're each going to be worth a point, and they're also going to get the movie, and that's going to be worth, in this case, two points. However, if they won when playing a twist, they get to put their own cards face up, but all the opponent's captured cards still get placed face down by default. Now, it might happen sometime where someone is uncontested when you go to the showdown. In that case, they will win it in an uncontested manner, They'd automatically win the tile, and they can place their cards face down like this. Now, if they did play with a twist, they're not obligated to, but if they want to show their cards, and they did have a twist, then they can then score face up as normal. But let's say it ended the way we did these two fought for the showdown, and the player that's playing the black color won. You would now then go to the next one, which is the short. And then these two players would have a showdown for this short feature, and so on. And if you're playing a five to six player game, you do it again on the next short. Now let's say in a round, these two players did a showdown for short, but there was one player that folded. If you're in the fold, you always place your cards face down in your scoring. That's the only thing you score. Even if you played a twist, you must play them face down just for the single points. Now we just walked through one whole round of all of these five phases. Now you'll continue doing this until all of the player's cards have been played out. Which means when you take the last tile from the stack and you place it on the feature film, you know that this is going to be the last turn for this season going through those five phases. Because remember, you're playing two cards each round and at some point you're going to run out of cards. Now at the end of the season, you're going to score. So you're going to look at all of your cards that you've scored, all of the face down ones are one as it shows on the bottom of the card. All the face up ones will be worth the points here. You're also going to score points for your films that you may have gotten as well. Now at the end of the season, if it's not the end of the third season, you will get all of the cards, all the ones that were played, discarded. You will shuffle them all up and deal them out the same as you did at the beginning of the first season. You'll also take all of the feature film tiles, shuffle those up, set them up the same way. For example, three or four players, there'll be five here and two set aside. Same way as you set up the first season. If you're at the end of the third season, then you'd go to end game scoring. But before we get there, I wanted to tell you about a different type of card that you may have seen in your hand, and these are called helper cards. They have red backs, and on one side of your player aid, you will see the helper cards, and it talks a little bit about what they do and how many cards there are of each. Now, you'll play these, depending on the card, at different spots, like this says during the showdown, or during the team up, or anytime, or after folding. You just play these cards when it says to play them. Anytime you play one of these cards, you'll draw a card from the deck to replace it in your hand. And during the team up phase, when you're selecting which cards to place here, you might want better options. You can discard as many of these as you want from your hand, drawing back up the same amount of cards of helper cards that you discarded into your hand, giving you more options to possibly play. Now you cannot discard normal monster cards this way, only the red helper cards. I'm not gonna go over what they do because they're all self-explanatory and they're written right on the cards. Also keep in mind, all the scoring examples I've shown you and all the showdown examples, we're using just default scoring. Keep in mind that six different cards have different abilities that can change what might happen with powers and scoring and things like that. On the back of your player aid, it shows you all the different possible monster cards, their point values, their abilities, and how many there are of each, seven of each card. And again, I'm not gonna go over what these do. They're very self-explanatory written on the cards. Now, if this is the end of the game, meaning end of the third season, you'll score the season as normal, but you'll get an additional two bonus points for each of the films that you've collected and one bonus point for each of the short features that you've collected. And at the end of the third season, whoever has the most points is the winner. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Creature Feature faster than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I placed the link below me right in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask them since I'll be notified, but so will Trick or Treat Studios.